Um, and that brings us to the uh, the last kind of uh, reporting that uh, that I like to share uh, with you today. That's about the the scheduled reports. In the introduction slide, I, I talked about how all of the uh, project information is stored in one single database. So we got the uh, the model, the quantities per location, cost per location, and we use that to create uh, a, a project schedule. Because all of that information is integrated and, and, and put together in, in one single database, uh, creating graphs like a resource histogram, cash flow curve, or resource graph is a matter of reading the content of your project database. So let's take a look at how that works. We're in Vico Office and I'm going to open the, uh, the schedule planner to explain how uh, that information is used. Um, what we'll see is the, uh, the flow line schedule that was created for this project. So you can see the uh, locations in the project over here to the left. Let's zoom out a little bit to see the entire project. We see the locations over here to the left. Uh, these are the tasks. This is the time scale. And each line represents the, uh, a task or a crew that's being performed in a location. Now, these tasks are uh, performed by resources. And the resources are coming from your cost plan. That's what you can see if you open the properties of a task. Now, that tells us just by reading the information from the linked cost plan when and, and when I need the resources over time. Uh, so that's the resource, history, or resource graph that I can just read from the project information. I, I don't need to do any resource loading. Uh, all of that is coming from the in integrated data set. So we can see for each point in time uh, how many resources I need of a certain type. And uh, you can adjust and adjust and, and either show adjust colors and, and show or hide uh, the resources that I would like to see. Yeah and the, the, the resource information that we're getting from the uh, the cost database is uh, generate resource histograms. This is an example. It shows the uh, the labor hours total amount of labor hours over time uh, so for each of the weeks in the project it shows me um, how how many labor hours I I have on site it tells me where the peaks are uh, so it tells me uh, for what load of resources my site needs to be prepared if I get a, a peak of resources like this one here in this week uh, I better make sure that I have um, enough parking spaces and uh, enough capacity and uh, uh, on, on site for people to work. The line shows the summary. So this is the total. Numbers for the total here to the right. Numbers for the bars are over here to the left. Let's look at another example. Um, I created a, um, a filter for concrete materials. So pretty helpful is to see what the <coughs> what the uh, what the demand for concrete uh, material on site is per week uh, so there is weeks where you no know, concrete deliveries are needed at all uh, weeks 45 and weeks week 50 uh, but um, the uh, week 6 of uh, 2012 in february i see that i need 160 cubic yards to be delivered to the site and this is the total number again of uh, of concrete that I uh, that I need. All of these views can be filtered. Uh, so if I only want to see foundation, so my amount of concrete that I need for the foundation, I just filter out the foundation locations. Click OK, and that updates the uh, the histogram. Shows me per week how much concrete I need just for the foundation level or I can filter it out for particular tasks. Uh, so let's take a look if we, I can find a good one, concrete columns and beams. Let's say I want to see how much concrete I need and when. Click OK and then updates that view again. Very simple to explain uh, to subcontractors, suppliers, owner, uh, what the requirements are for the side, uh, the, the resource requirements um, and um, 
it doesn't require a lot of calculation. You don't need to prepare um, a, a spreadsheet that takes you hours and hours to uh, to put together.